so we can go around and um, welcome again, everyone, um, to our Friday Perfect Connections meeting. Um, I'm Susan Walker, formerly from the University of Minnesota, um, and I will pass it over to Becca. Are we answering any kind of question? Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. And then if there's, I, I'll take notes. If any, if there's anything specific that you'd like to talk about today, um, or questions or anything like that, so then we can circle back. Um, Katie's not here. Katie Anderson had asked a couple of weeks ago about talking about um, home visiting and how it's um, sort of got started or how you do it in your districts, but she's not here today. So we'll table that um, until Katie can join us again. Yeah. So if there's any, um, you want to do crappy to happy? <laughs> sure. Yeah, let's do a check in. Let's so so we'll quick do uh, um, if one is crappy and seven is happy, where are you today? Back is a six. Wow, look at that. Kind of a six. Anybody else? Six. Oh, Calistra's a five. Julie's a five. Mary Kay, you're I'm I'm trying to figure it out. You're five. You're oh, you're eight. an eight. Eight. Mm -hmm. Whoa. What a happy group. Yuji, did we yeah. see how, where you are? I mean, on one hand, I'm very happy, and on the other, kind of, <laughs> so there are multiple things going on. <laughs> um, and I thought Sandy was at a two. Oh. oh, okay. Oh, well, so if you want to talk about that, Sandy, when we get to you, you can, you can throw that out, okay? All right. Thank you, everybody. Always good to, to check in with where you're at. Um, okay, yeah, so so we'll go back, um, introductions, Becca, and then if you have, if any, anybody has anything you'd like to talk about, we'll take notes. All right, Becca, go. I'm Becca. I'm a parent ed in Maplewood, Oakdale, North St. Paul, um, and I'm partway through my fifth year. Uh, I, for the second year in a row, teach an infant class where I'm the only one, um, and I have a love-hate relationship with it. I love, 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 love teaching it. Uh, I struggle with all non-separating classes because of just the chaos factor. And I'm on my own. I don't have other parents. I don't have an early childhood teacher. It's just me with the parents and kids. Um, I think I got my boss to, to shift wording, at least for the younger infants for next year. But like one of the things we say we provide is activities. and I, that's the, my least favorite part of the job. It is just like, it's, it's Thursday night, it's Friday morning is my class, and Thursday night every week I'm like, oh, what am I going to do for an activity tomorrow morning? Um, throwing, it's, I don't know why it's just not in my wheelhouse, but uh, coming up with planning an activity that's appropriate for babies and having the materials and setting it out and doing all that is super hard for me. So, I was curious if other people do classes where they don't have an early childhood teacher to team with, where they're doing it on their own. And especially if you have to come up with activities that are like in the mouth safe or whatever, you know, stuff for babies, what other, what other um, people might be doing if they're in that situation. And then I will throw it to Sarah Hansen. Thank you, Becca. <laughs> I, I would be open to talking about that as non-separating classes are super challenging. I am up in Northeastern Minnesota. I split my time between um, schools in Babbitt, Tower Sedan, and in Ely. And um, so my, my looming question is, is it too late to sign up to do a workshop at Manafi? <laughs> if anybody here knows that. <laughs> Nikki, are you on the committee? Okay, we'll connect. Um, so that's just like a short answer question that I have. And I'm going to send it to Lee. Me? Leah? Hey, Sarah. Sorry, um, Leah. Yeah, Leah. It's been a while. So <laughs> um, I'm Leah Dunbar. I use she, her pronouns. I work in St. Paul, specifically at the Highland Park Elementary ECFE um, classroom. 
let's see. Um, I was kind of wondering that as well, Nikki, if we can still submit a proposal to present. Um, and also, let's see. So I have, so I'm, I'm only in my year and a half, a year and a half in, and I am also a cooperating teacher for um, a student. So technically I'm supposed to be like after uh, a cooperating teacher after three years. So I'm just wondering, and we've just talked it over, Shannon and Maggie and I and the, the student, but just wondering for if you've had if you've been a cooperating teacher for someone and any advice. And yeah, I know Nikki, you've definitely done that for a lot of people. Thanks. Leo, do you wanna pass it to someone? Oh, I forgot, sorry. How about Carissa? I'm Carissa. I am a parent in Mounds View, and I feel absolutely 100% everything you're saying, Becca, except that I do have an early childhood teacher I get to plan with. We don't, I mean, we teach the separating classes together, but not, I'm 100% by myself also for all the non-separating, no para, no nothing. And then babies is different, right? Of course, you can't do even with, for toddlers. So I'm very much in the same boat you are. Um, I, other than, yeah, that being always a perpetual question for me, I guess, I don't have another huge question. Kind of a sad thing is we're losing. Um, she hasn't actually been a parent ed, practicing parent ed in the district for a couple years, three years now, maybe, but um, she's still been working in the program and she's decided to move on to a different job. So I'm a little bit sad about that. Um, I didn't really miss her. Um, and we're losing another parent ed. She's amazing. She, I don't, it's stressful for her, I think, to do parent ed. It was just kind of, it, it's all good for her. It's amazing, but um, a great loss to our program. And I didn't think I would cry, so sorry. <laughs> I'll pass it to Nikki. I'm Nikki Murphy, and I am um, a parent family educator and home visitor in Robbinsdale area schools. Um, and happy to be here. And I will go to Yuji. Hi, thank you. Uh, I'm Yuji. I'm licensed in Minnesota and working for a nonprofit in New York City. And uh, I would like to learn about how to help um, people like parents, they do not speak English. And how can these parents help their children to develop uh, literacy? English in English. So thank you. Uh, I will pass to uh, Julie. Hello, I'm Julie, parent ed in Oatana. Um, what's been on my mind this week, um, we just met yesterday to plan next year's calendar. And um, we are considering going to um, two sessions rather than three, same number of, well, basically the same number of weeks, but um, just because of the way spring break falls, our spring session would be so short that we don't think it would be appealing to people. And so um, that would be, that would be entirely new for us. And I guess I'm, I'm just wondering other people's experiences with, um, two times, two enrollments per year versus three, if you've had that experience and, um, and uh, the, the length of our sessions, um, you know, so currently we do, it, the aim is to have somewhere between eight and 10 weeks, or I'm sorry, eight and 12 weeks per session. And it would be more like, you know, 14 to 17. So um, that's what's been on my mind this week. And that's it. Um, I'll pass it to Mary Kay. Hello. Uh, I'm Mary Kay Ashley. I teach in the Burnsville League and Savage School District um, as a parent educator and um, all around favorite sub for everything. Um, I've I had a few days off in the last few weeks. And so I decided to offer them to my boss and 
She found ways to keep me busy every moment of the day. Um, one day, she three times during an hour when I'm working as a, P, as a program associate, she's texting me and saying, go here, no, go here, no, go here, because of things changing in terms of staffing and people being sick. And But it was a good day, you know, um, got to do stuff that's fun, got to make a difference, got to, so anyway, um, uh, non-separating classes. Um, I'm very lucky. I teach two non-separating classes um, on Saturday mornings with an early childhood educator who's also got a master's in autism services and is working on her special ed master's. Um, and uh, we we teach in two different classrooms. Um, what, the first class is for um, birth to three and the second class is for birth to kindergarten. And so we each come, we come in, we both come in at the same time and I set up the infant toddler one and she sets up the other one. And it seems to work pretty well. Um, I I have hesitations about um, non-separating classes that have no visual, no no discernible um, parent ed piece other than casual conversation. Um, so what I've done is I've I, I've passed a topic list for them and asked them to tell me what kinds of things they want to learn about, and minimally I will get a um, handout to them or a, you know, email it to them ab about that topic, something about it. So they have a start. Um, because we are, uh, we, in our, in our district, there's a rule that if you call it playtime, you can't do anything that interferes with constant play. Um, it, there can't be any, you know, I used to do an infant toddler playtime in the evenings where there was like a 20 minute discussion in the room with the parents and there was a parent there was a early childhood educator or a program associate there to kind of keep an eye on the kids and but but that's not allowed anymore so um so that's of interest to me um and the other also um of interest so yeah and I'm just um I'm bivocational so I'm just a little crazed with how many things I got going on at a time but Thankfully, breaks are helping every little break. Although when my teaching, um, when my teaching colleagues asked me when they came, when we all came back from Christmas break, so how was your break? Um, I said, well, I did one funeral and eight services, and it's been full. So, no, it's all good. Is anybody else who hasn't spoken? I guess I wasn't paying close enough attention. Nancy, sorry, I didn't. I didn't see you come in. Hi, Nancy. That was a late ad. So I, <laughs> I'm not sure what I'm answering. Except I, I know I'm Nancy Trahey, and I work for Albany Area School District as a parent educator and home visitor. Was there a second part? Yeah. Anything burning uh, that you would like to talk about today? Um, Nothing burning. No fires <laughs> in my personal life. That's another story, but not at work right now. Yay. Good. Um, I think, let's see, Sarah. No, Sarah, you went, right? Yeah. Sarah. Yes, Sandy. Like Sandy. Oh, we need to hear from Sandy. Oh, and Yuji. Yeah. We need to hear from Sandy. Um, <laughs> down there at it too. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm Sandy Solter. I'm the parent educator in Fairmont, Minnesota, which is um, Southwest Minnesota. Um, I guess, so the two is just because I've been just really overwhelmed with everything to do and not enough time to do it and all that good stuff. You guys know how it is. And I'm, you know, I'm student teaching this semester taking the two grad classes that go along with that you you guys have done the drill um but then it kind of just it downhill yesterday and I don't want to go into it but if anybody has a like few you know five ten minutes at the end where we could stop the recording um I didn't want to say anything at the beginning because I know people's time is precious but if anybody has a, like a few minutes afterwards like I could use some feedback but um otherwise I love I love being a parent educator and I'm I'm usually a seven when I'm actually 
teaching. <laughs> so that's the good part is like when I was teaching this morning from 830 to 1130, I forgot why I was a two outside of that. <laughs> so. Oh, and nothing burning. Sorry, nothing. Okay. No other questions. Great. Um, and yes, and we we will do that. And I'll keep an eye on our time um, to uh, give us some time at the end. And I think, Yuji, um, uh, I think we'll wrap up with you. Yeah. I did already. Oh, you did. Oh, see? <laughs> I'm just, I'm so focused. So, and no, everybody else is gone. Julie, you went, right? Okay, great. Well, welcome again, everyone. Thank you all for those contributions. Um, Nikki, do you wanna knock out the Manafi workshop question? Um, yeah, I would say go ahead and submit a proposal through the link um, that was, I think it's still active um, because I think that they will still read it and um i know that the you know like the keynote speakers they were all solidified some time ago but the sessions are still a work in progress so if you have something that you um are hoping to present i would encourage you still put it through great thank you uh thanks for that advice okay so some of the topics we, we identified uh, doing non-separating classes um, especially infant classes solo um, without an early childhood teacher, um, what your experiences have been as a cooperating teacher. Um, I put in brackets because I just wanted to reinforce, Carissa, to, and to everybody that, um, you know, when, when we have colleagues who leave or colleagues who retire um, or for whatever reason, right, and they leave, it's real. I mean, that emotion, that, that transition, um, is there's just so much to it, right? And it's not all just the practical stuff of who's going to teach what when that person's not around or, you know, things like that. Um, these are people we care a great deal about, or it could be a very contentious colleague that we need a little bit of emotional recovery from, you know, or whatever. So I just didn't want your observation to go without, you know, some reflection that, it's a big deal and we're with you on that. Um, let's see, also, so Yuji also had asked, um, I love Yuji's questions because these are like chapters. <laughs> They're like chapters in the, you know, parenting education books. So um, about working with parents who don't speak English and also helping them um, and I and usually did clarify um, about helping their children learn and improve um, English. The one thing that I'll just note with that, since we're talking, since most everybody works in ECFE programs, is I think whether or not ESL um, and is available and how ECFE programs partner with ESL. Um, so we can um, share that. And then, um, and then uh, about lengths of sessions and when you're, you know, like what are kind of, and I have seen this too, variations from district to district about how long sessions are and whether, um, you know, and also that sort of continuity of sessions um, over holiday breaks and things like that. So, yeah. Um, so should we just go to the top and talk about non-separating classes or is there one of those topics you really want to get to? So I'm, a, I'm a late comer and I apologize about that, but what was it about non-separating classes? That was the, uh, question. Becca? I've got an infant class on Friday mornings and I teach it all by myself with no early childhood teacher. And I love, love, love this group, right? I love this class. I, I'm right with Sandy on like, my numbers are high when I'm actually teaching. But the prep for it makes me a little crazy every single week because I, I even just Pinteresting and, and Googling and, and trying to find ideas for what's appropriate as an activity for 
babies that's on like my little activity table. Obviously the whole room is set up with fantastic activities, but they're very much like one-on-one -on -one parent following their child or playing with a toy with them versus like a project or a, a, an experiment or a sensory thing that's happening that everybody's trying together. And um, I'm hoping the pressure will be down a little bit next year with at least my younger infants that we won't advertise the class as being one with like planned activities versus just play with your child in this wonderful environment. Um, so I was curious what other people do who have uh, no early childhood teacher to do that type of prep, uh, what, what people are doing. I'm sure there's lots of people with more experience, um, but this is my sixth year having to prep for both early childhood and parent ed part of infant class. And um, I kind of just decided to give myself in great, uh, some grace and give myself a system that I could, I felt like comfortable I could stick to. So I usually have uh, one sensory thing on a table um, that the, the parent can sit with the child if they're old enough to sit on the lap or we have a high chair in the classroom, we could put it on the high chair, but so like applesauce, um, oatmeal, Cool Whip, um, pudding, you know, all those fun things that they could play with. Um, so one table, I do that. And then on the other table, um, I usually do some sort of keepsake thing. Um, and not every week, but a lot of times I, I do like a keepsake where they could either do the baby's handprint or footprint into some sort of little cute thing based on what time of year it is. Um, so that's kind of how I, I've done activities up on our tables. We have two round tables in the room. And then um, I usually have about five other specific things that I choose differently each week. Like um, this week I put out specifically infant musical instruments. Um, I put out some like shape sorters. So like each week I'll specifically choose like five different type things that they don't see every week that just aren't generally out in the room. Um, I also had like, you know, scarves that they could play peekaboo with and, you know, so, um, that's kind of what I do, um, in my classroom. Just like I said, I felt like I needed to find a system and for me that's working and it's making me feel better that I have some sort of system. So, so pardon my cat just bit me. <laughs> she's, she's nasty sometimes. Um, her name's Claudette and she usually claws. But anyway, um, I wanted to kind of talk about that too. Um, so this is now my second year doing non-separating infant classes and I do them all by myself. Um, before I had um, an early childhood educator that did the infant activities. So I've actually had a lot of sort of that input from what they have done in the past, which is really helpful. Um, for what I usually do is I just, you know, I always have the toy shelves available and anything that's on the toy shelves is open to them. And then I do have like a an activity that is um, sort of, you know, our featured activity, like it could be mu musical instruments. We have like a ball pit that they can go into. We have tunnels they can crawl through, or we've done sensory things like, um, um, you know, each child has their own little bin of dry oatmeal or whatever um, to play in. Um, we do, we do water play um, once every session um, where they basically can wear a swim diaper and get in a tub of water. <laughs> and it's a lot of fun. It is a lot of work. Um, and just depending on who's in the class, it's very busy, very, very busy. Um, and then I do my parent discussion during the playtime. And I, ha I use a smart board so that we can kind of keep on track with what we're talking about. So if you're distracted for a moment with something going on with your child, then you can kind of glance at it and be like, oh, yeah, that was the question. <laughs> um, it's a lot of work. It is very, very much work, but it is 
for me, it works a lot better than um, having an early childhood teacher. It just feels more natural to all be together. So that's that's what I have to say about it. I don't know if that's helpful. <laughs> Sure. getting ideas is helpful you go Nikki <laughs> you know I'm getting the sense that our format here might be a little bit different so I'll, I'll explain the format how like the class goes and we'll just see if anything aligns and if it does I'm happy to ask another teacher I'll explain for permission to send you some content but um in our infant classes we have a couple different ages so we've got the little ones we've got a little bit older like because these kiddos are moving and mobile and walking um, but we usually come in, we've got a little bit of time to explore the space of the room. We do a circle time. Then we do what we call a focus activity. And I think that's what I'm hearing in this. Like when, when Sandy's talking about what she's got on the various tables or sensory or this or that, um, we call it a focus activity and the parents and the children are doing it together. Um, and we've given them like integrative observation questions, things that we want them to make observations about that are gonna be related to the discussion in a bit. Um, and so they do that activity. So, you know, like um, Julie said, we actually had a sensory table. It's right behind me right now um, with water um, on Tuesday evening. So it's just, I mean, easy to, easy set up, right? When you've got the sensory table or something like that. Um, and then we go into our parenting discussion. But what I wanted to say about the format of like the planning and how, um, how, how much work this is, like Julie was saying too. Um, we actually have um, a parent and family educator who's really the lead for our infant classes. She plans focus activities for the various age groups for the entire semester. Um, and so we know what they are and they can get set up. We can get some help before the class um, to get those things set up. And so when we're doing our ILPs, um, we can take a look at the grid and go, okay, well, this is the focus activity. How am I, what, what am I going to do to integrate that? Like, for example, we were talking about temperament on Tuesday night. So it's like, okay, we're, we're using the water table because that was the focus activity that was planned. I could certainly change it, but how is that related to temperament? I asked our families to make observations about perseverance um, and to, to figure out like, you know, are they going to continue working to, to get the water to spin the wheel or are they going to move on to the next thing or how perseverant are they, you know, if they walk away with a toy when the parents are saying, oh, the water stays in the table. So trying to figure out how that relates to the, con to the parenting discussion. Um, I think that's the PE role, but if it's helpful, like I was saying, I'd be happy to ask the PE who creates the um, focus activities for us, if if that's okay to send that along. Um, because I think most of us that are in the infant room here, we, and for me, it's only on Tuesday evenings. I'm mainly toddler and mixed age, um, but it helps me in, you know, when I'm in that planning process to figure out what is the, what are we going to do? Um, and then how is that going to relate to the discussion? That would be super helpful, Nikki. That would be awesome if, if they're willing to share. Um, our setup for my infant class is a little challenging in that the age range is much bigger than I would choose if I were designing it. And we, I've talked with my boss a little bit about this, and I think we're going to split things up a little bit differently next year, which I'm looking forward to. But um, basically, you, you have to be under 12 months by September 1st is it. And that includes spring semester. So by the end of spring, you can have 18, 19 month old kid, all right, <laughs> and a newborn in, in the same class. And and so it's just like, okay, well, like when you're under four or five months old, you don't really need, this is here my opinion, I suppose, but you don't really need a planned activity. You just need to have that FaceTime and interaction with mom or dad or um, caregiver. Uh, and it's once they're more mobile and exploring that, that it makes more sense to me to, to have planned activity. Um, but I've got the, I've got the whole group and I've got about 14 kids in my class. So it's pretty significant. Um, ours, I, when we start, I have things set up with a bunch of quilts over the circle time area for babies to feel comfortable being there because they get washed every time like instead of just going down on the 
carpet and I have some background cheerful no words music um going and then on the little tables I have some kind of thing um this morning the thing I planned fell through and so it ended up being I put out chunky paintbrushes little cups of water and construction paper for like painting with water I was like can't call it water paint it's like not watercolor it's just water painting you know um and then some of those like egg crayons to start working on um developing the pincher grass but it will be helpful way down I was able to tell the parents why these are helpful activities to have fun with your child if they're interested great if they're not that's okay too and and some paper so it was kind of a drawing art type thing that was out I would say of the 14 that like maybe four people went to and that's the beginning time of of ours is like come in explore the room with your child do the activity that's out that I explain and then after like maybe 15 or 20 minutes we come and do circle time and straight from circle time we do a parenting topic so to the you know finding it's super important to have parenting topics. Oh yeah, in my non-separating classes, I'm very much still doing parenting. In fact, with my infant classes, that's the bulk of the time, right? We've got this little interaction time with an activity or playing in the room. Then we have circle time, which the babies love and I just love waiting. And then we just kind of let the kids explore the room, but, but it's a little hard because then how do we talk? It gets so loud. And then every once in a while, I will just sing. Because as soon as I sing, everybody gets quiet. <laughs> um, and otherwise, I start feeling like I'm yelling, and which is the last thing we need, right? Is, is the teacher yelling at <laughs> me just to be heard? Um, so, like finding different ways to like bring the volume down and focus down. I try to do as much small group discussion as I can, so that if you're chasing your new walker around, uh, you can talk with like one or two other parents instead of trying to pay attention in the group. I'm curious about things like, like using screens, because that's something I've been very, very much not doing in my non-separating classes, just because I'm trying to model like babies not having exposure to a ton of screen time, which also means with my ADHD staying on track is a little challenging um, because I don't have my slides that I have in my separating classes. I can't show the video clips that I would show often in my separating classes. Um, but I'm trying to not be a uh, visual distraction to the kids playing. Um, I've also been scared of doing food. Like, I, I, so for like the sensory stuff, it's like, ah, I feel pulled in multiple di directions because on one hand, it needs to be safe to go in the mouth. On the other hand, sometimes food isn't safe to go in the mouth. What if they have allergies or what, you know, like, or, or what if they're too little to be eating? So anyhow, like... I second guess everything and then find myself like, ah, I don't know what to do. So that's, that's my. I, I have a wonder. Um, and I've been thinking about this lately, you know, we have the friends of family Facebook group and I've been thinking about like more specific groups so they can be linked from that group. But for example, I teach an LGBTQ course and um, class and people have been reaching out and we've been just like processing together and talking things over. I'm like, oh, we could have a group and invite others um, who want to join and just collaborate. But like, would y'all like that? I mean, that kind of group or that this is like a non-separating infants class because I bet there's so much wisdom out there. And, but it's just like, how do we connect outside of like Friday afternoon, right? Um, how do we connect? Does that sound like something people would, I mean, so someone has to take initiative and make that group and then post it on the friends of family and then, you know, get people to join. Just, can I mention one thing about food? So in our district, we have a, just, um, we don't use, and, and Minneapolis too, I think, just like a food equity thing where we don't use food in the classroom in a non-eating way just because of food scarcity. So just wanting to throw that out there for folks, just a different lens to look through. You never know when someone's sitting there, like, I wish I had that oatmeal to eat this morning, right? So um, just an equity lens. And there's all those considerations too, like all the different allergies.
Um, I just have to say that I think um, I agree with you that the age range is unrealistic to run a meaningful class. I And I'm curious, how long is your class? Is it an hour, hour and a half? What it, it's an hour and 15 minutes. Okay. So a lot of times I feel like I get almost an hour of parenting time. Not quite, but like it, it, it feels like I get a really significant time because that is definitely the bulk of our time together. Sure. It's super distracted parenting time. So yeah, yeah. I, Next year, I, I think our plan is to have still once again from September 1st as our timing, but um, birth to six months and then six to 12 months, um, which still means by the end, like as two separate classes, it still means by the time you get to May, since we're going back to September, we're going right. to have a pretty wide range, but it'll be a little less. What we have done... Um is we look at the age of the child by the end of the first week of classes. So, because, you know, we, so if they are over a year old, by the time they are, you know, if we start our winter session January and the last day of the week is January 5th or something, then they, if they are a year old by January 5th, they are in that year, that age range, which works well. And we don't we don't end up with this huge range <laughs> throughout baby classes. Um, but I honestly hadn't even thought of that about that. So you know, my, my concern earlier was that we're thinking about moving to two sessions rather than three, and that will stretch out our baby classes to be, you know, <laughs> a bigger age range. And I was kind of thinking that moves perfectly into that question. Right. Yeah. In my district, we have a weird combination of we have two sessions. They're 18 weeks each, but that includes every single week. So if you miss a week due to election day is on a Tuesday, so that class has one less day or or MLK, you lose a Monday, you know that. So it might not be exactly 18 weeks, but that's how they're separated. But it's also kind of a year long class. So I teach it like it's a year long class. Um, and 90% of my families are continuing. Um, and that's where the complication is with changing age, age things. Because if I've had this group of infants for semester one, they don't want to start a new group with a new teacher, which it might be semester two, they want to see it. And because I focus so much on community building and that's like, the heart to me of what, what I'm doing, I want to keep that group together. But then all the new babies come in or whatever, and those, that's why those age ranges get stretched out more and more. So it, it, it is hard, especially if you're actually thinking of it being a year-long class, how on earth do you keep it age-specific? Um, it's almost impossible at the baby end of things. That's how we do it. We're year long. Last year we used to do two and now all of our oh, classes are year funny. long. And um, and my baby is 10, as of September 1st, birth to 10 months. So yeah, so like now I've got three walkers, lots of sitters, but a couple that are still just tummy time on the towel. And it's hard. I don't try to do table. I am impressed that you try to do tabletop activities those of you that do like last year I did the last month or maybe like five weeks. Then I incorporated some just water painting and sensory bags. And I can't remember what else. Um, but most of the year I'm not trying to do those, even though those three walkers are probably ready for some of that. They're going to have to wait, I guess, <laughs> unless I rethink it for next year. For this year, they're going to have to wait. Um, so yeah, it's tricky. And then it just kind of feels like it gets somehow stretched out. And it's full. I'm not adding babies, um, which is another tricky thing about year-long classes is I've been full since September. Anybody who has had a baby since September has nothing. We have nothing to offer them right now. Although we are thinking about adding another baby class. So maybe. Our district maybe. won't put a cap on it. So. <laughs> 
that was my my boss's decision that the infant class is free and because it's the like wanting to welcome families they're they're oh. so there last year we had 24 but we separated into two we were lucky enough to find another teacher so we were able to break the groups up this year I, it's just me I understand That's... offering it free and and wanting to get more people, but I feel like as if I was going with my child, I would feel like that was chaotic. I mean, I don't, I haven't been there, so I haven't seen it. So, but I, that would feel overwhelming to me. I feel we cap ours. Well, we had a debate whether it was seven or eight, but it's seven or eight somewhere in there, and that works well. I'd be thrilled to cap at ten. I, I've got fourteen with this huge range, so it's it's a lot but at the same time yeah we don't have anything else if you have a baby in march where you know where do you go and and wanting to be accessible to everybody so it's it's challenging especially in a district with a small staff and a small program like how do you meet needs for everybody i want to just for a second digress from the age gap conversation because it's a fantastic conversation but the educator who created the um, focus activities that I was commenting on and kind of taking down your names to make sure I could share it. She walked in. So okay. I wanted to introduce you to Cindy Birch and, um, and share with you. Um, this is, this is, she said, yes. Yes. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. And, and we all, I always like to, to put that out there because I like to scaffold the topics and then, um, I, I present that to them when we first start the class and then, um, we take some time to like look through it and any questions and and certainly I mean there is like as we go into each topic there's time to expand on it or or continue on um, asking you know like can we add some of some more information about this into this topic but I think um, especially in infancy and I don't want to make that sweeping they don't know what they don't know thing. But because, you know, they, they know a lot when they come in, they know a lot about their children. However, it's easy to scaffold, scaffold the learning. So we usually typically, um, the first several weeks is on topics and then it turns more into issues. So we're laying that foundation in the infant room. And so um, that's, how I, that's how I do it. And I know other people do it all different ways. And so giving them, giving them some, um, I don't know. They they can they can operate within all of that how if they'd like to add to that. But that's how I do it in like the zero to six age range. Thank you, so Cindy. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> you have our permission. It's something we've done at Robinsdale for a long time. So I didn't create it, um, but I followed it and it's worked really nicely. Okay, so now we can go back to the, the conversation at hand. I just wanted to Thank introduce you. you to Cindy too. <laughs> See you later. So do other people have like year long classes, half a year sessions that are eight weeks? What what are other people teaching? So you mean our non-separating classes, Becca in specific? Um, we well, you think you're small. We're really small. And so we have one that is, I think we said um six to 18 months, I think is what we said, or maybe it was even 11 to 18 months for the, the one class in the fall. I don't recall. I'm sorry, the exact months we decided on. But anyway, it's the non-separating one. And like I said in the chat, once our community ed director had come in to participate herself with her, in, her young son, she started putting a para in. I don't have an early educator, but I do have a para who's there to kind of wrangle, you know, and move around the room with the ones that are more mobile. And that that doesn't alleviate all the parent um, concern about what their kids are getting into, of course, right? But it does help, and and especially over the over the weeks, it is only a six week class. Um, it it was eight it was eight weeks prior to the pandemic, and I I don't know if we're going to move back up to that or not. It's not free. It's one of our classes, and then the winter. Um, toddler class is a little bit older range and I do have an early educator and we do practice separating. So I think this, this time we were 12 to 30 months. 
Unfortunately, we only got three families. And so that class was canceled. Um, I started offering uh, an in, a free infant once a month. I've got a breastfeeding, a lactation specialist who's willing to come in and um, meet with parents of newborns with me once a month for free. Um, but so thus far, I've had zero uh, registrations for that. I don't know what's going on this year. Usually my, our classes were full, even our twos and threes class in the evening. Um, the only thing I can think of is that our, um, our community ed director moved the start time up for that half an hour. And I think that's making it really difficult because parents we're in a small, we're in rough, small rural towns, people, there's not enough jobs. I mean, everybody doesn't work right here. Right. So they're having to get home, pick up their kids from daycare, get some food in them and get to class by five 30. And I think that's what is the problem. And I hope she, she if she's watching this, that maybe we can talk about changing that back again for next year. Um, yeah. So, and then, and then their other class is a birth to five uh, years, mixed ages. And um, we, uh, babies underneath nine months uh, don't need to separate. They can come along with their parents to the talk time. Um, so that infant class I ha had in the fall, I want to backtrack a little bit. This year I'm in a former fifth grade classroom. It's not set up for ECFE. I mean, you know what I mean? I don't have the usual equipment in there. I don't have toys in there. So I, they did allow me to move a cabinet in there and I do have some things that I can pull out. So it, like you say, it, it saves sometimes I'm not pulling chairs and tables out for parents to meet this year. I've got this classroom I can use, but it's not set up for children. And so those non-separating classes that we were going to meet in there, it's, it's a bit of a challenge and does take a lot of prep time above planning the children's and parent-child activities. So I, I can relate to what you're saying. Thanks, Nancy. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, if you, if, if anybody wants to continue to sort of comment on the question about uh, class length and that sort of thing in the chat, um, otherwise I'm going to um, pause the recording or stop the recording um, and as was requested, um, so again, uh, thanks to our home viewers <laughs> for joining us today. Um, it's been wonderful to um, imagine you in the room with us. And, um, and again, I won't be here next week, um, but there will be um, a meeting and of course, and we've got a number of great topics um, from today that will be able to be discussed. So, um, all right.